Uh, this day, our topic is spiritual independence. And we chose this topic because this is the Independence Day weekend, the birth of this country in 1776. And so it's a special day for the country and it's a special day for each and every one of us, not just our national independence, but our personal independence, who we are and what we are about. Of course, our topics are all based on our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success, and all the input and vibrations I get from the people who are part of this program today. Be sure to visit our website, herbertharris.com, where you can learn more about our books, our programs, and most of all, where you can schedule a success consultation where we can talk and decide if there's Decide what we can do to help you get where you want to go, do what you want to do, and be whatever you desire. So before we get started, let us do our meditation to get us centered on where we need to be doing what we need to do. Let's put our feet flat on the floor, sit straight up in our seats, close our outer eyes, open our inner eyes, and take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. And in the space of peace and relaxation, I am at peace with myself. Let us affirm that together. I am at peace with myself. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. And in this state of peace and relaxation, my mind is open, receptive, and ready to learn. Let us affirm that together. My mind is open, receptive, and ready to learn. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. And so it is. Wow. Thank you so much for being with us today on this great um Independence Day weekend. You know, I love to open with a quote, and probably the simplest, most profound quote of all is Susan B. Anthony. And she said very simply, independence is happiness. Independence is happiness. I picked this topic today because this year, this incredible year, we are now beginning the second half of this year. And I want to make sure that we have the tools and the processes and the concepts necessary to maximize our performance for the rest of this year and create the person we want to be, doing the things we want to do, having the things we want to have. And that's critical, folks, because... Over these next six months, things will happen. And if you have the tools to deal with them, then you will know exactly what to do to keep you on track to being, doing, and having whatever you desire. And so this idea of spiritual independence is one of the power tools. This is not just a, a lightweight tool. This is one of the power tools that can help you overcome anything. They help, they can help you get you unstuck. They can help you make a breakthrough. They can help you achieve a level of success that you've been seeking, but has been evading you and avoiding you. When we look at the, uh, the definitions, independence or independent means not subject to control by others not affiliated with a, a larger controlling unit. 
And spiritual is really about the things that are affecting the spirit. In reality, spiritual is really identified with energy. Conceptually, we are spiritual beings, energy beings having a human experience. Under the idea of E equals MC square energy, vibration equals M, which is manifestation mass times the speed of light squared. So every vibration has a manifestation. Every energy has a manifestation. So the fact that we are born and that we exist means that we are the manifested energy in the God mind, in the mind of the creator. So this idea of spiritual independence is not being under the control of anybody else. In 1776, well, the, the, the Revolutionary War began when the, the colonists decided that they did no longer, they no longer wanted to be controlled by England. And when England uh, imposed taxes and tariffs, the Stamp Act, the Tea Party, the, the colonists, the Americans decided that they didn't want to be subject to that. And they proceeded to have a revolution. They, they declared their independence. They, they took their independence. You know, there's, there's an interesting thing about that. You always have to take your independence. I was looking at a, a quote by Dr. King. And Dr. King said something very powerful. He said, freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. And so when the, the colonists were under the oppression of the British Empire, they were never going to give them, Britain was never going to give the colonists their freedom. The colonists had to demand their freedom and then back it up with action, thus the Revolutionary War. In the 12 Universal Laws of Success in our book, on page 22, there's a whole section on harmonic relationships. And the first harmonic relationship is the relationship between you and your source, you and God, you and universal consciousness, by whatever name, you and the, the first mover, the prime mover, the prime reason that all exists. So the God mind the good mind. When we look at this idea now of spiritual independence, it is really saying, I have a relationship with the God mind that is so profound that it is not subject to outside circumstances. It is not subject to outside situations. And so what this is saying is now we are literally through our spiritual connection to our source, able to operate where nothing matters but what is between us and our source, so that we're not controlled by appearances. We're not controlled by circumstances. So our circumstances don't define us because of our spiritual nature. That's powerful, folks. Because this is saying that no matter what your condition, no matter how bad off your, your life is, your life situation, no matter what kind of stuff you may be in, it's really bad, unpleasant, painful, that you don't have to stay there. That through your relationship with your source, through the spiritual connection, through the spiritual independence, that your being is independent of your condition. To, to get a better understanding of that, let's look at the, the parable of the prodigal son. And for those biblical scholars, we're not biblical, and this is not a religious talk, but for those biblical scholars in the book of Luke, 15th chapter and the 11th through the 32nd verses, talks about the parable of the prodigal son. And basically, the prodigal son is you and I when we have made decisions in our lives that put us in the pig pens, in, in, a, in, in, in a failure, in disappointment. So the prodigal son had demanded his, his share of the, 
of the fortune of the family fortune from his father. The father gave it to him and he went off into the far country and the far country is anywhere different from where you should be. <laughs> and he wasted his money and he ended up in the pig pen feeding somebody else's pig. And so the, the, the allegory here is that you can be in a situation in your life right now where stuff is just terrible, horrible, painful. But you don't have to stay there. In the prodigal son, in verse 17, it says, and when he came to himself. And when you come to yourself is when you recognize that first harmonic relationship between you and your source. So it's not so much, it's not just who you are, but it's whose you are. Whose you are, what relationship are you in that can empower you? And the relationship that you have between you and your source is so powerful now because it says, when he came to himself, he looked at his situation and he said, man, I am in a bad situation, but my father, my source, has food enough and to spare. Even the servants in my father's home have more stuff than I have. And so this is a powerful, a powerful concept, folks, that no matter what your situation, when you come to yourself and you say, hey, I don't deserve this. I should not be living this way. These things should not be happening to me. When you come to yourself and recognize your relationship, your oneness with the source, that's great power now. So your circumstances don't define you. And then in verse 18, it says something even more powerful. It said, I will arise. And so this says that, number one, you are not defined by your circumstances and your situation. But number two, in order to change it, you got to do something. Arise, meaning I will lift my consciousness above my situation. I could be broke, as they say, busted, disgusted, can't be trusted, all those negative things. But I don't have to stay there. I can change my condition by changing my thinking. First about whose I am, recognizing my alignment with the source of power, of infinite power in the universe, and who I am, that I don't deserve this. I am the, the, the child, the son, the daughter of an all-powerful, all-knowing God who created me for a good purpose. So then as you go through this year, when stuff happens, and I'll say negative things happen, when you have failures and disappointments, it's okay. That's just part of the growth process. You can't become a butterfly without going through the painful experience of being a, a caterpillar. But the thought is, now you understand the principles involved so that you can now move through anything that happens over these next six months. Move through anything that happens in your life and make it work for you. The source has everything you need. In other words, energy in the, in the universe is never created or destroyed. It just is. And so all that we do is be to be connected to our source so that we have the power tools to deal with our reality, to create that reality and change that reality so that it works for us. But it takes awareness of the condition and a commitment to act. Because the moment you make a decision to change your life, to change your thinking, to change your emotions, to change your habits, the moment you make that decision, everything is fine. The moment you make that decision and take action on it, you can change it. So then, when we talk about spiritual independence. So well, how do we create it? Well, number one, we don't create spiritual independence. It's there. So it's how do we align with it? How do we put ourselves in the in the flow, we'll call it. 
And we do that with four steps to align you with your creator and with your source of power. Step one, self-realization, self-reflection. You know, we always talk about the success GPS, and the GPS always requires two coordinates. You got to know where you're going and know where you are. And so this idea of self-reflection says that, you know, the, the, the principle says, be still and know. That no matter what is going on in your life right now, I mean, it can be tragic, it can be terrible, it can be painful. But no matter what it is, if you can be still and know, just stop for a moment and recognize who you are. Be still and know that your condition does not define you. Be still and know that you were created for a good purpose. Be still and know that you are heir to all that is. Be honest with yourself. You see, one of the things that happens is that when we look at our condition, we're not honest with ourselves. You know, people can be in abusive relationships, painful relationships, and they choose to ignore it. They choose to endure it. They choose to make excuses for it. Well, when you have this process of self-reflection, you look at yourself and say, I make no excuses. I did it. This is what it is. It's painful. It's unrewarding. It's unfulfilling. So once you recognize that, then step two is to take responsibility for creating it. Ooh, you know, that's something that we often have a lot of trouble with. Because there's a tendency to want to blame others. If we blame other people for our lack of performance, if we blame other people for our lack of results in our lives, then we can't fix it. We can't change it. As long as the cause of our condition is something outside of ourselves, we're at the mercy of whatever that thing is outside of ourselves. When we let the world mind define us, then we now become a slave of the world mind. But when we take responsibility for our condition, so when the prodigal son is in the pig pens of life, he says, hey, I'm here. I, I take responsibility for it. He says, if I could just get back into my father's house, I'm not even worthy to be his son now. Just let me be one of his servants. So you take responsibility. Whatever we're experiencing right now in our lives is a result of our thoughts. We can have thoughts of lack and limitation or thoughts of abundance. A result of our emotions. We can have emotions of fear, insecurity, or emotions of courage and compassion. It's a result of our habits and actions. You know, the rubber always hits the road and whatever we do, whatever we put into action, where the word becomes the action, we live it. The result is the result of our relationships, the people with whom we permit to come into our space. And so this idea, this step two is to acknowledge it and confess. I did it. I messed up. You know, those of us who are in, marketing, affiliate marketing, or network marketing, any type of sales program. You know, you get to the end of the month and you look at your numbers and you go like, oh my goodness, my check is going to be zero. I didn't, I didn't close any sales. I didn't write any business. You say, well, what happened? Oh, because people don't like me because I'm white, I'm black. I don't speak well. My life, all of these things will keep you stuck. But the moment you take responsibility for it, you say, you know what? I'm here because I didn't make my calls. I'm here because I didn't study hard enough. That's why I'm getting a C in this class. I'm, in, I'm stuck in this job because I have not put forth the energy to move up, to move forward. So once you take responsibility for it, you can change it. And the, the, the source for energy of making the change comes through that spiritual connection that spiritual independence, that my condition 
does not determine my potential. The third key to aligning yourself with spiritual independence is to develop a plan of action. You know, the Habakkuk says, the Habakkuk says, write the vision, make it plain upon tablets. And all of us who are writing our goals, our visions, the things that, the outcomes that we want to experience, write the vision. Then it goes on to say that he may run that readeth it. In other words, the vision without legs and without action does not manifest in accordance with what you want it to be. The vision always manifests. It just deter it's determined by whose vision manifests. <laughs> okay. So when you develop this plan of action, there are four key elements to the plan of action. Number one, practice mindfulness. You know that idea when it says, be still and know, go into the quiet place, go into the closet of your consciousness. This ability to stop and disconnect from the external world and to recognize the spiritual nature of our being is like going out to a very powerful fire hydrant and connecting up your hose. Now you have all the water you need to put out the fire of your existence. So practice that meditation, that mindfulness, so that you can learn to connect to the inner self. If you can't connect to the inner self, the God mind, then you don't have the power to make things happen. You'll always live a life of reaction to other people's stuff. Step two, learn more. You know, Ray Kroc said something very powerful. Ray Kroc, the founder of... Um, at the um, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Ray Kroc, uh, I'm sorry, Ray Kroc with McDonald's. He put the McDonald's brothers and took the franchise to incredible proportions. And he said this, when you're green, you're growing. When you're ripe, you rot. When you're green, you're growing. When you're ripe, ripe you rot. And so this idea of committing to learn more, develop a, a consistent study plan, to start reading, to start attending seminars, start listening to other people, because the more you can, the more you learn, the greater your awareness, and the greater your awareness, the more potential for your consciousness. You know, many times people's level of consciousness is based on the level of their exposure. And so they don't even know that there's a mountain beyond the trees. But when your awareness and your exposure now has said, one day I climbed to the top of a tree and behold, I saw a mountain. That's like exposure. Now you know it's there. And so through learning now, you are able to create a knowledge base a method of exposure, a process of exposure, whereby you can increase your awareness. As you increase your awareness, then using your mindfulness process, you can expand your connection and your alignment. Number three, develop a daily method of operation. And I'm going to call it daily routines. You see, there's a quote and it says, in the beginning, our habits, in the beginning, we create our habits. But in the end, our habits create us. And so develop daily routines that support the outcomes that you experience. My coach, Dave Smile, he said every day he reads over his goal, his vision. And he reads all the things, the good things he wants to say about himself. I'm a good person. I'm a master closer. I make my sales. I learn what I need to know. I meet people. And all, all the things that you need to do to be successful, to create the life you desire, the outcomes you want to experience, put them into a ritualistic form, routine. 
And number four on the developing that action plan is to get support. One of the great things behind our, our, our mastermind group on Saturday mornings is we get a great sense of support for each other. And we can see over these months and years how, how members of the mastermind group have grown and become and created things on their own and books and courses and success in many, in many levels. The fourth key to aligning with your spiritual self and aligning with spiritual independence is walk the talk. Do the work. If you don't walk the talk, if you don't do the work, you don't put it into action, all this stuff doesn't matter. You know, I've known seminar junkies, people who go to every seminar that there is on the planet. The only seminar that they don't attend is the one they didn't hear about. But yet they stay stuck. Say, so why is it? Because you're not walking the talk. You're not doing the work. And the key to doing the work is time. You see, time is God's ultimate gift to us. God gives us time and energy, manifested energy. So the moment we are born, we are manifested energy and we have time as the gift from God. What we do with that time is our gift to God. And so when we walk to talk and do the work, it's all done in a time context. You notice how now at the midpoint of the year, you look back and you're like, what did I do for these six months? What have I accomplished? How did I get here? Well, you're here. You're in your own personal pig pen. So when you walk to talk, you ritualize your life. You put everything into a time context so that all the rituals you develop, the rituals of meditation, certain time every day, the rituals of visualization, when you read your goals over certain time every day. There's a reason why all of, you know, you go to every religion, they have specific times for prayer. The Muslims pray five times a day. I saw Noel on us. Noel was a priest and studied in the priesthood. And their vespers that every organized religion, every spiritual practice has systematic things that they do at certain times. Because when, it's, when you put your actions into a time context, it gives you the harmonic vibration to get it done. To make it happen. Once you've done this, once you put your spiritual practice into a daily method of operation, your daily method of operation includes your spiritual practice, your meditation, includes your daily list of things to do, includes writing out your plan the night before, includes scheduling all the activities that must be done, includes holding yourself accountable to get it done. That when you can do these things, Nothing is impossible. So let us summarize today. This day of spiritual independence, the, the goal was to, to give you a tool that's available to you to handle whatever confronts you, to take out any Goliath that appears to stop you and block you from your dreams and your goals, to give you a mindset, to give you a process to make it happen. So spiritual independence, to be so aligned with your source of whose you are and your purpose here on life that you are no longer defined by your circumstances and your situation. That your outside world has no control over you now, that you live your life from within out. Joyce teaches a whole program of life design. Design the life you want to live and then act on it. Remember the prodigal son, when you come to yourself and arise and take action, you can change it, whatever the situation is. That this idea of connection, this alignment, is really awareness of, a, of, a, of, a, of an alignment. It's how we were created in alignment, but our lives often take us off course. This idea of alignment is to recognize who you are and to take action on it. To 
align yourself with your spiritual independence. We don't create it. It's already there. We just align ourselves with it through self-reflection, to always be still and know and bring ourselves to a rest point so that we always have that ability to go to the well of consciousness to help us handle the daily events, to take responsibility for what is because once we take responsibility, we have the power to change it, to develop a plan of action where you write the vision, where you practice mindfulness, where you commit to learn more, where you develop new habits, new routines, and where you get support from other people who love you and who lift you up. And then finally, where you walk the talk, where you do the work, where you live your life in the time context, where you ask yourself from moment to moment, what is the best use of my time right now when I consider my goals, my vision, my purpose, and the outcomes I want to experience in my life? When you execute your daily method of operation diligently, consistently, without fail, then you know you have the power to be anything you want to be, to do anything you want to do, and have anything you desire. Always knowing that the best is yet to come. And so it is. Let's just take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. Thank you so much for being with us today on Instagram, on Facebook, our Zoom meeting, our Zoom team. May this spiritual independence be a power that you access and use it. Acknowledging that you are a spiritual being having a human experience, but as a spiritual being, you have a connection to all power, all source, and all possibilities. Be sure to visit our website, herbertharris.com. Get a copy of our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success, and see some of the other goodies on the website, The Success Toolbox. All that site is devoted to helping you be what you want to be, do what you want to do, and have anything you desire. That's herbertharris.com. Schedule a success consultation so that we can talk about what you, what's blocking you and what you can do to transform your life from what it is to exactly what you want it to be. And so it is. Remember this. You can be what you want to be, do what you want to do, and have anything you desire, always knowing that the best is yet to come. So it is.